Uh, today, I'd like to give a presentation titled The Journey of Migration Between Apache Skywalking and Service Mesh. Thank you very much for your time. My name is Rei Shimizu. I live in Japan. Uh, because of the time difference, it is now 2 a.m. This, this is the time when everyone is asleep. This is the hardest part of online conferences. And uh, I am a graduate student at Waseda University in Japan. And I'm majoring in computer science. And uh, I am a part-time software engineer at a company called Tetrate. Tetrate is an American startup that provides solutions to enterprise infrastructure problems centralized on service mesh. In this company, employees live all over the world, so all of the work is done remotely. I'm mainly working on OSS products, mainly Envoy and Steel. And recently, I've been working on the observability of service mesh. And I'm also focusing on the Apache Skywalking ecosystems. This is my GitHub account. Here is the agenda for today's presentation. First, I will explain what a service mesh is. Then I will talk about the key concepts used in service mesh, especially the position of Apache Skywalking in service mesh and why Apache Skywalking is important in service mesh systems. And next, I will explain what was required to integrate Apache Skywalking into the existing Istio-centric service mesh ecosystems and then give a small demonstration of Apache Skywalking running on Istio. And first, what is a service mesh? Uh, service mesh is an infrastructure that provides common components, mainly networks. It seems bringing a stand standardization to networks when dealing with services. In microservices, by developing a service mesh, common features such as mutual TLS for secure communication between services, weight limiting, circuit breakers to prevent failures from spreading, and access policies for communication between services can be used as infrastructure. There are mainly two approaches to construct service mesh. One is to provide these common service mesh features as a library of applications. And the other is to have an application proxy called a sidecar that handles all inter-service communications. Both approaches have their advantages and disadvantages. But the sidecar approach has the advantage that the programming language for developing services can be polyglot. So the sidecar method is the most popular in recent years. Sidecar service mesh communicate as shown in this figure on slide. When service A makes a request to service B, all communication for app A is handled by sidecar A. Sidecar A makes a request to service B, but all communication for app A is handled by sidecar B. Sidecar B proxies to app B. In response to the request, app B sends response to app A with traffic interception of sidecar B, it is same as sidecar A. Sidecar B create response to sidecar A. Finally, sidecar A sends response to app A. In this way, 
All communication between all services is mediated through Sidecar. So any HTTP request can be interpreted by Sidecar. Of course, it is also possible to work requests and perform distributed tracing while performing requests in sidecars. This is the reason why service mesh makes it possible to provide all communication func common functionality from the infrastructure. However, since every service has its own sidecar, implementing a service mesh also adds a lot of complexity to the infrastructure. To solve these problems, there is a software called Istio, which is a software to manage service meshes in an integrated manner and alleviate some of the complexity I mentioned above. Istio is implemented as Kubernetes native, which makes it easy, easy to support dynamic infrastructures. Istio uses Envoy as a sidecar, which is a proxy software with additional Istio-specific features. When a service is deployed to an infrastructure with Istio, a sidecar is automatically deployed to the service by a feature called sidecar injection. Istio also injects IP tables configurations to handle all the inter-service communications on Envoy. These are why Istio users do not need to be aware of sidecar's existence when deploying. In large-scale microservices, the number of sidecars increasing proportionally. To manage all of them, there is a control plane as a component of Istio to manage all the sidecars. The sidecar, the control plane is single binary called Istio D, which has three main functions. First is called pivot, which is a component that automatically injects configuration into Envoy through the Kubernetes CLV. The second is called Citadel, which manages the certificates used for inter-service communications, as inter-service communications in the Istio environment is basically authenticated and encrypted using mutual TLS. And it manages the certificates and client certificates used for that communications. The third is Gary, which is a component that manages all the Istio settings. Okay, next, let's talk about Envoy, uh, which is used as a sidecar for Istio. Envoy, as it is called, is a cloud native high performance uh, edge middle service proxy that is designed to be optimized for cloud-native infrastructures, yet delivers high performance through its superior threading models and asynchronous mechanism. Envoy was developed by Rift, like Istio. Envoy is now being actively developed by a matured community that includes Google and other large companies. Envoy is optimized for service mesh workload, but it is not only for them. We can utilize Envoy as a proxy or on the field that applies matured HTTP proxy, such as HA proxy or Nginx. Because Envoy itself is designed to be highly scalable and the development of Envoy is community-based, 
it can keep up with new technologies quickly, making it one of the most promising OSS. For example, Envoy supports Quick or HTTP3 earlier than other proxy software. One of Envoy's innovative feature is XDS, which allows proxies to dynamic, dynamically inject their own settings. Istio's control plane injects proxy settings through XDS. Envoy also has a plugin mechanism called filters, which can be written by the user using C++ or Lua. These features are not novel features that can be seen in NGX, but the most noteworthy feature of Envoy's plugin mechanism is the ability to write plugins in WebAssembly, which allows it to run more faster, securely, and pluggable. To deep dive about WebAssembly is beyond the scope of this session. The strength of Envoy comes from the strength of its community. Okay, uh, let's describe the life of request that goes through what components in Envoy from receiving downstream user requests to upstream destination services. The Envoy threading model is scalable because it consists of a main thread for configuration management and independent worker threads for processing actual requests. The worker threads perform event-driven and asynchronous IO-based approaches, so problems such as the C10K problem do not occur. In the case of a normal HTTP request, a component called listener receives the TCP connection and the byte stream received by listener is processed by a component called a transport socket via a component called listener filter chains. The transport socket provides an abstraction of the communication at the L4 level, where the TLS encrypted byte streams can be combined. After that, it goes through a component called network filter chains, where access logging at the TCP level is done. The HTTP connection manager handles all the processing at the HTTP layer, including logging at the HTTP level and extracting information from distributed tracing. After that, the component called router selects the server to be proxied and proxies the HTTP connection. Okay, uh, next let's talk about Apache Skywalking. Apache uh, Skywalking is an application performance monitoring tool called APM2 suitable for cloud native use cases, capable of handling not only distributed tracing, but also various metrics, log aggregation, and other aspects of microservices observability. APM is written in Java, but the agent to transfer data to APM are written in various programming languages, such as Node.js, Python, .NET, GoRang, and so on, as well as Java. Uh, implementing distributed tracing and metrics aggregation mechanisms in uh, each services is often a boring task, but some of Apache Skywalking agents support auto instrumentation, which reduces 
the need to implement distributed tracing mechanisms in a service. One of the advantages of Apache Sky working over other APM systems is its suitability for envoy-centric service mesh systems. For example, Envoy has a function called metric service that sends statistics to an external receiver. And Apache Skywalking can act as a receiver. In addition, Envoy has a function called Envoy Access Logging Service that sends corrected access logs to an external receiver. And Apache Skywalking also has a function that can receive and analyze those logs. All of these features are reasons to use Apache Skywalking in our infrastructure built around Envoy. Apache Skywalking can display the various metrics and logs collected in such a rich UI. It also has the ability to understand the topology of the service from the trace information. So you can visualize such topology. Okay, I'd like to deep dive into distributed tracing here. In microservices, a single request often goes across multiple services. As the number of services increases, so does the cost of operations to figure out which service is broken when a failure occurs. Distributed tracing is one way to endure observability in such a large scale distributed systems. There are many implementations to achieve distributed tracing today. And to achieve compatibility, there is a normal specification for distributed tracing and metrics called open telemetry. Apache Skywalking can also be used as an APM tool in an open telemetry compliant format by embedding distributed tracing into microservices users can understand the RPC relationships between services like the presented diagram. In this diagram, a single workload executes RPCs through service A, service B, service C, and service D. Each service sends send to the receiver a log of the execution of a function called span and the dependencies between the spans. The dependencies between the spans are DAGs and a span is like a node in a DAG. And the receiver passes this information so that the user can analyze it in this format. Okay, uh, let's go a little further. Span has roughly the following information. The schema of information in a span may be slightly different for different distributed tracing implementations, but it is almost, but it is almost always the same. For example, a span in Apache Skywalking has a span ID, the ID of the span's parent span, the start and the end times of the calls to the functions that make up this span, the logs obtained within the span, and the tags assigned to the span. In Apache Skywalking, all these definitions are defined in protocol buffers format to facilitate implementation 
in various programming languages. Uh, in distributed tracing system, it is necessary to convey information from the RPC source to the RPC destination in order to express the parent-child relationship of, of spans. In general, this information is sent in the HTTP request header. In the case of a participant working, the additional information is sent in a header field called SW8, which contains the trace ID to identify the entire trace, the ID of the parent span, and the sampling information to determine whether the node receiving the SW8 should generate the span or not. From the value of this SW8 header, we can uniquely define the trace. Envoy itself has the ability to generate distributed tracing spans and send them to APMs such as Apache Skywalking. So putting Envoy at the front of your microservices can prevent your application from tightly coupling distributed tracing implemented mechanisms. In addition to Apache Skywalking, Envoy supports various APMs such as Zipkin and Datadog. Okay, uh, let's take a closer look at the implementation of distributed tracing in Envoy. Imagine a service mesh consisting of many Envoys. In that mesh, there is an Envoy called Front Proxy that serves as an entry point for traffic from the outside. Upon receiving a request from the outside, the front proxy generates a request ID and attaches it to the request header. This request ID is used for all RPC calls in a single request. Whether or not to actually trace the request is determined according to a concept called sampling policy. So to speak, all of the requests won't be targets of tracing. In Envoy, the default, default tracing policy is based on the value of the request ID generated by font proxy. For each RPC, a span is generated by Envoy for the request that is the subject of the trace, and the span is sent to the tracing provider. As I mentioned earlier, Envoy decides whether or not to do trace based on the request header generated by Envoy, and whether or not to do trace is determined by the value of the request ID. However, the format of the request ID varies from proxy to proxy. To proxy. So for example, NZX can't interpret the request ID generated by Envoy and vice versa. So that Envoy will not do trace. This will result in a partial break in the set of spans 
of this trace. However, distributed tracing systems such as Apache Skywalking and Zipkin, which each have a request header to indicate that is an RPC belonging to a single request. This corresponds to the SW8 header we discussed earlier. This header can carry information about whether or not sampling is to be performed. Therefore, if it is possible to skip the sampling decision based on Envoy's request ID and decide whether to sample or not based on the sampling decision rules written in the distributed tracing systems specific request header such as SW8. Envoy will be able to sample even the request ID generated by another proxy. As a result, Envoy will not break set of spans in trace. Even for request IDs generated by other proxies. The ability to avoid sampling decisions based on Envoy specific request IDs has been added to the latest version of Envoy. Thus, tracing can now be done correctly even in, in environments with mixed sidecar proxies. Envoy is capable of understanding the Apache Skywalking tracing protocol on its own and has the ability to forward the corrected trace information to Apache Skywalking. This functionality is currently implemented using an Apache Skywalking library for C++ called CPP2Sky. CPP2Sky is designed to be integrated into Envoy, but also to provide as a C++ SDK for the Apache Skywalking ecosystems. It is easy to integrate this library into existing C++ applications and implement the ability to send trace information to Apache Skywalking APM. The use of Bazer as, a, as the build system also makes it relatively easy to resolve the annoying dependencies that are often a problem when developing software in C++. As I explained earlier, the library was developed as part of the Apache Skywalking system, so it also has its own features. For example, it has a configuration discovery service that allows APMs to send configuration information to each agent, and it also logs tracing information. As such, it is relatively easy to implement with an interface using RAII. But I, unfortunately, it does not have the auto instrumentation capabilities like the Java agent, which incurs some implementation costs. We are looking into ways to make this implementation even easier in the future. Envoy and Apache Skywalking work together not only for distributed tracing, but also as a log character for access logging. Envoy Access Log Service, called Envoy MLS, provides real time logging via gRPC. MLS provides HTTP or TCP level logging. We are currently implementing a feature to guarantee 
the transfer of logs. This is a feature that has not been mass yet. This feature will be useful when handling critical logs with ALS, as it will allow Envoy to resend the log if it times out or fails to write log into the disk or memory. On its own, Envoy provides the functionality to support strong observability in cloud native infrastructures. As part of that, it has the ability to send collected metrics to a variety of locations. But the destinations have to be implemented tightly with Envoy, making it difficult to scale. Now, Envoy has a metrics service that allows it to transport collected metrics to an arbitrary receiver that implements the handler. Apache Skywalking is also a metric service receiver. In Istio 1.11, we added the ability to automatically put Apache Skywalking settings into Envoy through Istio's pilot. In summary, these features are based on the cross collaboration between Envoy community and the Apache Skywalking community. And it will increase the, important, the importance of Apache Skywalking in Istio centralized service mesh environments. Okay. Uh, we will now move on to the demonstration of using Apache Skywalking with Istio. Okay, okay. Uh, let's start, start the demonstration. First, let's install Istio to existing Minikube cluster. Okay,
Okay, okay. Finished, finished. This is a graduation of the still state state graduation of moments. It is composed of skywalking. Skywalking API and Skywalking UI and Skywalking Elastic Search. Skywalking Elastic Search is a backend of Skywalking API to quit logs, logs, stress, or stress, or tracing. Okay. Let's try. It takes few seconds. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see, uh, see the the example of the browser. browser. This is a sample application to collect book information. And it is composed of some of the services. So this is a great example to try making services in environments and also apply a default example on Istio. Okay. okay, all of the skywalking related, related posts are running. Are running. Okay. Okay. Uh, 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 this, uh, this is, is a, uh, a skywalking, skywalking, skywalking this, this, is this is a parameter with combinations on steel uh, to, uh, to enable, enable uh, skywalking, skywalking based, based distributed tracings. And uh, note that uh, this random sampling percentage is configured on 100, but this is for demonstration, so we don't recommend to set this 100. Okay, I will supply. Okay, okay. Uh, let's, uh, make let's make a request. A request. Okay, okay. Let's, uh, let's open uh, uh, Skywalking on UI. This is integrated on ICL control. Okay, okay, you can, can see, see the attracted uh, uh, logs in, in the Skywalking UI. UI. And, and uh, also, also, you can you see, see the service topologies like, like this, this UI. UI. This is, uh, this is uh, uh, integrated with uh, 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 Ember Proxy. And, and you can see the, the uh, tracing, tracing the information on the tracing tabs, tabs like, this. like this. It is, it is like this. Like this. Okay. 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 Uh, thank you for listening. We welcome questions, and the time is uh, we we don't have enough time. So also we are welcome on Twitter described here. Thank you.